Welcome to Rise Up and Follow Jesus Christ with Pastor David Featherstone. The video ministry of Greater Second Baptist Church. Today, Pastor Featherstone wants you to know there is but one way to God, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. And the church, we want to exert all of our energy, all of our planning, in order to help people accept Jesus Christ before it's too late. If we're willing to. We want to welcome you to our fellowship of believers. Now, let's prepare our hearts and our minds in the worship of our Lord through the discovery of His Word. This is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful uh, that the Lord brought us through one of the worst snowstorms Arkansas has seen. And we are thankful to our, our YouTube uh, media director, Reverend Jason Wrightout, who has taken care of the last two Sundays. And this last Sunday, we didn't want to bring you a rerun. We just wanted it to be up to date. So we thank him for the two Sundays and the two great messages that he brought. We're just grateful that we're safe and we're back on uh, YouTube. And I'm just thankful to yet be here and be in the land of the living. We are grateful that uh, the Lord has yet protected us during this coronavirus. Let me say that uh, yesterday, uh, today is uh, Wednesday, so uh, I got the w word yesterday on the news that uh, I'm eligible now for my vaccine. 65 and up is where they are, so I'm uh, trying to schedule mine now, and I'm just encouraging all of us that we would do all we can to take the vaccine when it's available. Uh, I'm meeting with the deacons uh, by way of conference call. And one of the things we're going to do in the next couple months, starting uh, this month and next week, we're going to be calling all of our members. Each deacon is going to call their members. And we're going to be asking you, have you taken the vaccine? And we're going to record how many members we got that have taken the vaccine. We're going to keep up with it because we believe uh, this will be a way of us gauging uh, a good projected time of when we can think about meeting. So we're encouraging everybody to get the vaccine. We're not saying that's going to be uh, something that we're going to be dogmatic about, but it's just going to be good information for GSBC to have on record is how many members we've had that have received the vaccine and we're in now 65 and up. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you are 65 and above, please uh, call and make arrangements to get the vaccine. We are sorrowful as it relates to uh, the news about Kyrie Allison, one of our faithful youth, 20 years old, now has gone to be with the Lord. And we're asking that we remain proudful for that family, his mother and his grandmother, Dorothy Epperson. And we're just asking that the church would be in prayer. Uh, Brother Ken Wade's brother passed, asking that we be in prayer. And our faithful member, Sister Nileen Wilson, has gone to be with the Lord. And we will be rejoicing as we celebrate the life of these Christians. And even in the midst of wiping a few tears, we just want the church and the families to know that it's all right to grieve. We just don't grieve as folks who have no hope because we believe in Jesus Christ. And then let's keep Joel uh, Kreutzer lifted up in prayer. And then Andre Wesley, let's keep him lifted up as he's uh, ill 
And we're just asking that we keep Deacon Andre Wesley lifted up in prayer. Would you join me as we go to the Lord uh, in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we bow in humble submission to your divine and holy will. Lord, we're grateful that you have saved us. We're grateful for eternal life. And we're grateful that after this life is over, we got another building not made by the hands of man eternally in the heavens. So, Lord, as we mourn and grieve with those who are grieving, we ask it now in the name of Jesus that you would comfort those families now and you would have them to look to the hills from where their help come from. And may they, along with us, always remember that all of our help, all of our strength, comes from you. And Lord, as we are reminded each day of our lives that you are our source, you protect us, you keep us, you provide for us, and Lord, we're trusting you. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would move on our hearts as it relates to the coronavirus vaccine. Help us be wise in the decisions that we make and help us all be able to receive this vaccine when our turn come. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon this United States of America. We're praying now that our lives will be a living example of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we come to this study now, as we look at uh, the end, as we look at what's coming down the pike as it relates to your word, we are mindful that we are not those that are without hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And we're thankful that we have been delivered from the wrath to come. Bless our study now. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. We come this, this morning with the continuation of study in the book of 2 Thessalonians. And we're coming now still talking about the Antichrist. In the last time we was here with you, we made it from uh, chapter 2, verse 1, all the way to verse 8. And we want to pick up today is with verse 9 through 12 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me read them from the New King James Version. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I want to talk about today an evil partnership, an evil partnership. Life is needed one another to have partners. Many businesses uh, have partnership agreements. And most of the time, we don't think about an evil partnership. We want a good partnership. If I'm going in business with somebody as a partner, I want somebody I can trust. I want somebody that's going to uh, have my best interest in mind. But as we come to this study of Paul, Paul brings to our attention that there is an evil partnership. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians of a coming foe that would resemble Satan in many of his deeds. 
He would exploit those who were not able to distinguish his source. Sinful people in all ages lose the ability to recognize evil in false teachers. False teachers. That's one of the motivating uh, themes that got me moved to bring these messages dealing with the Antichrist. The problem of wickedness in God's good world makes us all sometimes scratch our head, but we must accept it as a fact. Uh, wickedness is a problem, but God's world is a good world. But because of wickedness, we sometimes don't quite understand why God allow wickedness to keep running its course. Here's a paragraph I wrote that I want you to pay attention to. The way to be certain we can be spared the destruction Paul spoke of is to love and serve the holy God. I'm going to say that one more time. The way to be certain that we can be spared the destruction Paul talks about that's coming is to love and serve the almighty God. And we do that by faith. When we grow in fellowship with God, when we grow in fellowship with God, neither Satan nor his representatives on earth can trick us into believing his falsehoods or his lies. I don't know about you, but over my life, I've been lied to. I've been tricked. Uh, I've been deceived. I'm sure if you are honest, over your life, you've been tricked. Uh, I've been, as we, we got another word we call con. But all it is, is we was deceived. Someone lied to us and we believed it. I'm very concerned about the church as our world gets wickeder and wickeder, as we now have been almost a year without gathering for public worship. And I'm afraid that the church may not be as strong as she should be or even could be. And one of the reasons I'm going to say that causes sometime deception or being deceived is our technology. Let me say this because we are encouraging people to study online. We are encouraging people to uh, still view good preachers. But let me just throw this out there. Everybody on television that's proclaiming what's supposed to be good news is not from God. Everybody that's teaching the Bible is not of God. And what we've got to be aware of with this technology Everything we Google is not absolute truth. Google is great. Google doesn't help me. But I want to share with us as we are coming with this younger generation. When they need an answer, they usually go to technology. And the news now, we get it from our phones. Uh, what's going on in the world, many times 
We all is getting it from a TV or technology. But if you just watch one channel, you get all your news from one source. If you're not careful, you won't have the truth always. Because did you not know our news, uh, TVs are biased? Do you not know now that there are certain news stations that's biased? And so we've got to watch what we allow to come into our minds and into our hearts as believing it to be truth. So today, I'll be teaching and explaining today's scripture, and I'm going to use some cross-references and then some other scriptures, but I'm going to be cross-referencing mostly. It's not before verses. And much of my cross-referencing will come from the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. Keep in mind, I'm talking about an evil partnership. The partnership, let me go ahead and give you the characters of this evil partnership. It's going to be the unholy trinity. It's going to be Satan, who will be called the dragon. It will be the Antichrist, who is going to be referred to as the first beast. And then we'll have the false prophet, who will be referred to as the other beef. So let's dig in to 2 Thessalonians chapter 9. You with me now? We're talking about an evil partnership. He says the coming of the lawless one. Now the lawless one is the Antichrist. Paul says the coming of the lawless one is according to to the working of Satan. We want to get that down first. The, the, the Antichrist, the Antichrist that he's talking about is the one that John gives us description of in the 13th chapter of Revelation. He's not talking about the Antichrist that's in today's world, but He's talking about the Antichrist, the one that's going to come after the rapture of the church, the one that's going to come and <clears throat> during the seven year tribulation period. And he's going to be a human being. That's the lawless one. Paul talked about it. So it must be important. He wanted the church to know that there is a lawless one coming. And he's explaining that. This got to happen because of the sin in the world, but the church has been delivered from the wrath to come. And after the rapture, there will be the revealing of this human being that's called the Antichrist. And chapter 13, let me just read uh, verses 4 through 8 of chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. Follow me now. Many, uh, some of our members has talked about uh, uh, interested in Bible study, love in Bible study. Well, here we go. I'm going to give you a Sunday Bible study that you can study even all week long. So here we go. So they worship, verse 4, so they worship the dragon. That's Satan, who gave authority to the beast and they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him during this period of time that they are unbelievers? The day the they are those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. And when the Antichrist, the beast comes on the scene, he is given power by Satan. Can you imagine Satan who is a spirit, right? Satan who is against God. Satan now gives his personality to a person called the Antichrist. The authority 
of Satan, the power of Satan is infused into this human being. And now he is carrying out the work of Satan. And Paul says that this lawless one is in accordance with Satan. Now, let me keep going in chapter two, because I want to just try to hook these two verses together. The coming of the lawless one is in accordance to the working of Satan. So now we got uh, Satan and the Antichrist as the evil partnership. And he says, with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Now we got this Antichrist and this worker of miracles. Let me bring in the false prophet to help us get the miracle working person involved. Let me read verses 8 through 18 of chapter 13 of Revelation. All verses, verses 8, verse 11 through 18. Then I saw another beast, that's the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Listen at that now. He had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. Okay, he has the appearance of Christ, but he speaks like the devil. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast. Here he is now, the religious leader. And he comes on the scene. We call him, and the Bible calls him the false prophet. And he comes on the scene, and he's working, exercising all the authority of the Antichrist. And watch this. And causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. Here we have now this religious leader. He is the one now who comes on as the third partner of this evil trinity. And he now is called the false prophet. He's the religious leader. And he comes and he does what is called some counterfeit miracles. And he said, verse 13 says, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceived those who dwell on the earth by those signs he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Here's what you and I want to make sure we understand. I underlined it years ago in my Bible. There is a term in the book of Revelation John uses. It's called those who dwell on the earth. That's a technical term for unbelievers. And this evil partnership now is focusing on those who dwell on the earth. Those are the ones who are deceived during this period of the tribulation that John is talking about. And so deception now is done and people believe it because of the counterfeit miracles. I don't know exactly how he's going to do it, but we know it's the working of the devil. So God has allowed the devil to do some miracles. But they are counterfeit miracles. He's going to say he grant that fire come down from heaven to the earth. And perform these signs. And there is a time when the Antichrist receives what is called a fatal blow. And then that fatal blow is healed. It looks like he rises from the dead. So all of that is counterfeit, but the people believed it. And the word I want to move toward the rest of the message 
And I shared this the other week and I caution you because this partnership will be the great deceivers. There is something called deception that we as believers need to guard ourselves against. I know we can't go to hell. I know we can't lose our salvation. I got all of that. But I come now doing this part of our uh, uh, church era with the greatest second Baptist church is I am concerned that we don't believe the lies. We don't get taken in with those lies that's going to come at us, that we are able to stay with truth. We're able to still in the middle of this pandemic, in the midst of us not meeting virtually, we're still able to take our Bibles and glean the truth from it. And as we do that, we're going to be those Christians that hunger and thirst for righteousness we want truth. We want righteousness. We want to be able to grow by eating truth. What is truth? I'm not talking about your truth. I'm not talking about my truth. I'm talking about the truth. And the truth is what God says. I'm going to leave it right there. If God says it, then it's truth. So we won't be deceived if we don't get away from truth. Now, Satan is a great deceiver. Now, you may not know this, but you do know this. So I'm just going to give you two that you want to remember. Satan started his deception in heaven. Ain't that something? Satan was able to deceive one third of the angelic hosts. When Satan got kicked out of heaven, the Bible says a third of the angels followed him. How can they follow him? He had convinced them that he could do whatever he was trying to do. And we know he was trying to overthrow God in heaven. And he had convinced a third of the angels that he could pull this off. Do you know what kind of deception that must have been that the angels listened to the devil? Yeah, you might say, well, that, that, that wouldn't happen to me. Well, let me tell you what Paul wrote Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. This deception go way back. And I just want to give you these two. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse 13, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Look at verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Well, I thought Adam was deceived. Now, Adam willfully disobeyed. Adam knew what God had said. Adam knew the truth. But when Eve came to him and offered him what Satan had offered her, then she was deceived. She really believed that Satan was a friend of hers. And if you and I would tell the truth and shame the devil, Satan didn't talk to me and you. And over the course of years, hopefully now we have grown to where we know his voice, we know uh, his schemes, and we are not entrapped by it. But do you know there's a lot of Christians now that's being deceived? Believing that something is not true, thinking it's true when it's not true. And so that's what we're bringing this. We're trying to combat deception. Uh, I don't like deception. I like truth. I was talking to a gentleman who I'm trying to disciple, a, disi a disciple, trying to help him, and working with him. And I hope all of us. I hope you got, everybody got at least one person whom you are trying to disciple. That's what we all are supposed to do. So I, I've been in this business of discipling uh, for a while. But I got one gentleman that I've been working with during this pandemic. And, 
And uh, he just straight out lied to me on several occasions and stuck to the lie until I caught him in it and, and, and brought a witness to him. And then finally he said, yeah, pastor, I, I lied. And I asked him, why did you do that? Well, uh, I don't know. But I'm just saying, here we are. Somebody trying to help you and you can't tell them the truth. Jesus in Matthew uh, warns the disciples about being deceived. Matthew uh, chapter 24, uh, verse four and five. Listen at what Jesus uh, tells the disciples in chapter 24, verse four and five. The disciples uh, had two questions. They asked Jesus chapter 24, verse three. Uh, now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, here's one of the questions, when will these things be? The things he's talked about up in verse one and two. When will all this happen? Tell us, when will these things be? And here's the second one. What will be the signs of your coming in the end of the age? So they want to know. Now, give us some signs. Give us uh, 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 when is your coming and when is the end of the age? Tell us what to look for. Here's what Jesus says in verse four and five. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. That's the first thing. <laughs> take heed that no one deceives you. He said, make sure that for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So Jesus says, now make sure that you are not deceived. Deception was possible because the love of the truth was rejected. Resulting in people, now look at verse 10 and 11 as I try to wrap this up. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, that's unbelievers. And here's what he said. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They believed what the Antichrist was selling from Satan and the false prophet. And as a result, they are perishing. And the reason people will perish, make sure we write this down. Make sure we know this. The reason people will perish is they did not receive the love of the truth. Let me do verse 11 and I'll be through. Verse 11 and 12. And for this reason, now watch this now. And for this reason, they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Paul says that God is going to send them a strong delusion that they might believe the lie. Not a lie, but the lie. What is the lie? I don't have time now to go through these verses, but in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3, 1 John chapter 2, verse 21, and 2 John uh, verse number 7, here is the lie. We all have believed a lie at one time. But John said, now God is going to send them a great delusion that they might believe the lie. Here is the lie that Satan sells. Here is the lie that the Antichrist sells. Here is the lie that the false prophet sells. Is that Jesus is not the son of God. That Jesus did not come in the flesh. That Jesus was not who he said he was. You remember at Calvary when he died and he rose, the Roman soldiers came up with a, a scheme and said, let's go back and tell our leaders that they stole the body. That is the lie that they want us to believe. And people are going to try to talk about not that God ain't real. The, the lie is that there is another way to get to God without going through Jesus Christ. 
The lie is that there is many roads that lead to God. The lie is you don't have to believe that Jesus is the only way. But let me tell you what the truth is. Jesus told Thomas, I think, in John chapter 14. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the way. Ain't but one way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Well, there is going to be a judgment. There's going to be a great white throne judgment. And all unbelievers will be thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. The Antichrist and the false prophet got thrown in there alive. In chapter 19, verse Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 and 20. Satan get thrown in in chapter 20, verse 10. And then all of the unbelievers get thrown in in chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. But I want to close with the good news of the gospel. We know that there is destruction coming. We know there's an antichrist. But one thing I want us to always remember. There is but one way to God, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. And the church, we want to exert all of our energy, all of our planning in order to help people accept Jesus Christ before it's too late. If we're willing to share the good news, if we're willing to believe our mission, love God, love others, proclaim the good news, and make disciples of Jesus Christ as we go. God bless you this day and always.